Hey guys, and welcome back to this third game of the best of three between, in the bottom right, we see this blue Zerg playing for Team Frenetic Array. He is Ninja, the Australian. Yep. It's funny, across from him on the map, Ohana, he is our red protest player from the Team Alien Invasion. He is Tarantia from Germany. Now we saw a very interesting game in that first one. It was kind of a gentleman's agreement to slow down and just get things all the way to max before we did a big, huge poke. But uh, in the second game, we saw some rather unfortunate decision-making from our Zerg Ninja with some very bad trades of roaches and uh, his attempting to use the tunneling claws, burrow micro, to no avail. Essentially, he was being picked off the entire time. Yeah, that really early, really, really early, like, endgame army from the Zerg player in the first game was just completely outmatched, or unmatched, I there guess, by the Protoss player. And uh, we saw the second game, Tarantia, he did not allow the Zerg player to get that uh, that max game army and, and uh, just have his way with him. Um, totally gave a different outlook completely in the in the matchup. Now, Ninja didn't go for that third game, third hatch style in the last game, but this map is pretty well known for, for getting it if you can get rid of these rocks with some early queens or roaches or whatever, but Tarantius right now has a patrolling probe on the on the uh, ramp just to see what happens, and the Forge Fast Expand coming down from him. He goes Nexus before Cannon every time uh, in these last two games, and we see the, the drone finally come out and Tarantius has been bypassed completely. He was planning on doing some block micro, but Ninja said, screw it, it's going to be like uh, Cloud Kingdom and just go right for the third, and Tarantius drops a forward pylon, which is not visible by Ninja, but if he was watching at all, he saw that the probe stopped right in front of where the pylon was placed. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see a cannon come up here to uh, just, you know, Delay that hatchery and possibly would take it out, making move straight back to the natural with this hatchery. Oh, and uh, he put the cannon in vision. That is. Woo! He's just challenging him to cancel this right now. Um, I don't know. Oh, and he's a pylon really block in the natural. He's really together. putting Ninja on the back foot here. Yeah, this is why you. Super frustrated, and we're only three minutes fifty seconds in. This is the exact reason you don't hatch first against a Protoss player. Um. Uh, he didn't, but it's the same kind of idea. This is this is why, because this is so much things they can do. He's gonna he's gonna end up canceling this this first hatchery, and uh, he's gonna if he wants to keep himself even in this game, he's gonna have to put some pressure on this first nexus from the from the Propels player. Otherwise, he's just gonna be on the back foot the entire game. And Tarantius expects that pressure indeed, having a cannon of his own and a probe ready to, to block with gateway. Oh, wow. Two Ninja more cannons coming down from Ninja. Ninja allowed this first hatchery to complete, even with Photon Cannons attacking it. And here we see him trying to break this cannon rush, so to speak, with Zerglings, and he's he's losing a whole bunch of Zerglings. He killed one cannon, but there's another one right behind it, as well as a couple more, one more cannon and one more pylon. He just even castles the pylon. He doesn't need it. The, the cannon's going to be able to deal with the, uh... This queen is going to die from this brand Actually, new... Oh, no <laughs> This is a little fire. bit of Miss Micro here. He could have, with the cannon, killed a couple more Zerglings, and then... and then I'll help you deal with it. But this th this first this first expansion he took at his, his would-be third is definitely in trouble from the full cannon cannon just shooting at it. Now, interestingly enough, Tarantius is the one with the lost amount of resources, but, but a good number of the difference between the Zerg and the Protoss are from cancelled photon cannons, the first two he had mm -hmm. out uh, in front of the mineral patch, and this final pylon will be cleaned up very easily, but there's still a blocking yeah. pylon at the natural. He cancelled in one cannon and as well as a couple of, of pylons, but at the same time, um, Ninja did a really good job of getting this hatchery to finish and stay there. With all that, that pressure, um, you wouldn't expect that hatchery to be able to live on but he managed to get the expansion going, and now he's got the, the third base going where the pylon was blocking. So uh, Ninja's actually in a, in a 
he's just fine right now from all the pressure that's going on to him early. And Ninja, he's going to be in a little bit of a Ninja <laughs> Tarantula. He's going to be in a little bit of a tough spot because of how much he's just spent on trying to stop that expansion. I'm actually uh, curious as to whether or not we will see a transfuse come out of this queen because it it is very likely to be sniped at some point later in the game. Buildings, Zerg buildings do regen, but extremely slowly. Actually, what we do see here from Ninja that we haven't seen in the previous games, he is spreading creep really, really strongly. He has an extra queen out on the map, just dropping creep tumors. And I think that queen will go for this uh, this natural base right there. Once uh, once it pops, and then we will just see the tumors being moved forward with no new ones coming down from that third queen. Yeah, but this is this is four plus creep tumors, uh, spreading creep, which has been a lot more than we've seen from any other time and during him during this series. Um, this can he's going to creep across the map rather quickly, comparative to how he's been playing, and uh, it could cause some trouble for the Protoss player if he doesn't get an observer out uh, to keep this creep in check. It doesn't look like he's getting that observer. He's going for a Stargate, Mike. He's he's doing something different. He's hoping it pays off. Are, do you think he's going to go for a 3 Void Ray, or is he going to go for the 4 or 5 um, Phoenix? He did just wipe out that Overlord that would have spotted it, and the Zerg has no idea that this is inbound. No, I'm pretty sure he's going to go straight into Phoenix play. Um, Ooh, we see one right now. Phoenix play without without Spore Colonies pro properly prepared, is it just it can kill so many Queens, it can kill so many drones, it... Uh, it's really strong play if the Zerg player doesn't scout it at all, and so far he has no way of scouting this. He has one out and two more on the way, just Corona boosting those Phoenixes out. And there's no way that single Zergling will be able to, to get up in the base and spot it, and the Overlords do not have their speed yet, so they can't get in there and spot it. I think there's going to be a pretty devastating attack coming from Tarantius when... He has missile upgrades, I should say. Ninja has missile, missile upgrades, but he has no Hydralis down, down to support this, and there are no sport colonies, sport crawlers out. I'm still thinking of Brood War, but we do see a macro hash coming down from Ninja right now. At the same time, we see Trancher going up to four gateways, plus the robotics facility, plus the Stargate. He has his tech covered right now. Um, if, he, if there's no crazy attacks, he'll be able to move straight into a third base and add some more gateways at some of our production facilities, he will be in a really, really good spot. But uh, on the other side of that coin, we see Ninja going straight for the fourth base. He's going to have such a strong economy if this doesn't get taken out. Oh, we see the Phoenix come into play right now. He's going to mm -hmm. supply block Ninja right away if he kept on True. going, but he's just going yep. in there right now and picking up a number of drones. Now there's four phoenixes, he sees his over overlords, and instantly he starts three, five, five sword crawlers, and that's going to make him completely safe from the phoenixes in his supply lines. Um, the, the accepted counter to phoenixes is more bases, and Ninja has this horse coming right along the line, and those phoenixes cannot lift that hatchery, so it's going to make him... If he can if he can keep these queens safe and his the rest of his drones safe, he'll be in a really, really good spot against this Protoss player on two bases. Now, Tarantius did a very interesting thing. There were roaches and lings waiting outside the breakable rocks down to Tarantius' third. And instead of just letting them hang out there and flanking them, he broke the rocks and then dropped four force fields and got all the lings, but only one roach that I saw. So it was a really interesting decision making on Tarantius' part. But we do see oh. a bunch of zealots coming in to snipe off his base, but he didn't do it on time. And he had the chance, and all these roaches had plenty of time to come back when they're super speedy on the creep. And I can't believe he still has all four phoenixes alive when he was just kind of leaving them hanging out over the spawning spore craw crawler. Yeah, you'll see, anytime you can trade just energy for some units, the sentry force fields for those Roches and Zerglings, that was a really, really great trade for this Protoss player. He's going to have plenty of time now for him for his uh, sentries to regen the energy, as well as, you know, make more units, get his tech more uh, advanced, and he'll be in a really good spot. Now Ninja's a bit afraid of these Phoenix having, uh, right after one gets picked up, he turns them all around, he's going to lose two in the process. 
and he saw that there were enough s stalkers out, out front to take him out because right now Tarantius has the supply lead and we do see uh, investors coming down but we also see extended thermal lands and the Colossus production beginning for Tarantius so right now Tarantius is on three base and Ninja does, has a fourth out but it's not even saturated there is no drone uh, transfer or anything going down right now and, uh, well Tarantius' th his third base is, is not quite worked in yet he has the oversaturation and drones in his main is natural he's got the probes ready to move down to the third they're, they're going to be there as soon as the base is ready. That's a really good thing for him. But at the same time, there's creeps spreading over halfway across this map. That's going to give the Zerg a huge advantage in, uh, in uh, map control. I love that. I, l I love when the map goes purple. And it didn't start out that way. <laughs> and we see uh, a little Zealot Warpin. He knows that the fourth is there. And he is ready to attack it with his main army, but Ninja does indeed have a lot more units than he had about 40 seconds ago with a number of investors in the, in the middle of them with their uh, fungal growth landing pretty heavily on one batch of immortals. But all these... that's a ton of force fields! That's like 11... <laughs> so 11 many force, fields. force fields! And uh, Ninja's giving away a, a, an investor too, and he is just going to back away from this hatch. He's going to get the hatch up. Uh, that army, it's it's so strong with the force fields there. He has to wait until the force fields are not there any longer if he wants to engage that army. Um, at the same time, he has the freedom to take the fourth base on the west side of the map, as well as as soon as he can deal with that army, that the base that he just had is also relatively safe. But that is a really scary army. Full, full classes, uh, uh, four mortals, three, three or four mortals, four mortals. Yeah. That's right, the first name. He has only yeah. one Colossus, though. So, oh, a second one comes in. He's going to be very lucky. Ooh, Tarantula is very lucky that 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 uh, backup Colossus didn't get sniped off. It was out of the group and could have just been fungled and surrounded by lings right away. Yeah, extended thermal lances is done. Yeah, he has roasted one infester right away. That is a very awesome graphic. Thank you, Blizzard, for that very entertaining death animation. Yeah, the graphics in this game so, so, so much better than three four. Oh but my God! Look at that. He, Ninja was supply blocked, and now he doesn't really matter because he's just losing so much to Tarantius' huge army. Ninja. A couple of stalkers coming down, some corruptors coming in. <laughs> Gonna pick off one of the Colossi, but it doesn't really matter. Tarantius is 60 supply up on this third, and we do so see some and very so desperation links coming in. They're not gonna do anything. Um, Tarantia, he is he's done a really good job of just constantly adding to his army with his gateways. And uh, or Ninja, he just was not ready for it. He had uh, he had units ready to deal with the Colossus, but he did not have anything to come from these Immortals. These Immortals are doing so much damage. Good game, congrats it's from Ninja, cheap. with 81 workers killed by Tarantius, taking a commanding lead in this third game, and he came back from 0-1 in that first game where Ninja took it, and that will finish this best of three from Chaotic TV. I'm Ko. he's Mike, and we are signing off right now. Hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe, like, comment, and all that jazz. Have a good one. Cheers.